Over the past three decades, Japan has been trapped in a state of stagnation. But what have we been doing during this time? For me, I've made it my mission to disrupt, disrupt this stillness, to act as a catalyst for change. As a silver entrepreneur, I've been throwing imaginary stones into the tranquil pond of Japan's economy, creating ripples that have led to transformation and growth. Today, I want to share with you my journey of challenging the status quo through two startups, an IPO, a corporate sellout, and even suing the government, and discuss how we can all contribute to revitalize Japan's future. In 1989, I graduated from university, a year marked by the Showa Emperor's passing, the fall of the Berlin Wall, and the pinnacle of Japan's economic bubble. As a consultant at Accenture, I witnessed the rapid decline of once great Japanese companies. The world has changed after the Berlin Wall fell. And while executives in these companies knew the direction they need to take, but uh, they were hindered by the weight of their own organizations. The memory of past success, a seniority-based promotion system, and lifelong employment acted as barriers to change. After five years at Accenture, I decided to defy the odds and start my own business amidst Japan's economic woes. During the time when the terms startup and venture business had not yet entered the Japanese lexicon, many referred to entrepreneurs like me as dasala, or corporate dropouts. Despite this, I remained steadfast in my belief that Japan could overcome the crisis, primarily by embracing the potential of agile, innovative, small enterprises. My first venture was a health product direct marketing company that leveraged customer relationship management and personal computers, a promising technology just before Windows 95 debut. Initially, sales were disappointing, but our persistence paid off, and by 1998, we had annual revenues exceeding 300 million yen. However, I was not satisfied with simply duplicating existing business model. I wanted to create something of my own. Japan faced its worst economic period in the late 90s with the collapse of major banks and securities firms. Meanwhile, the US enjoyed prosperity before the year 2000. The tide had turned just in five years. I was perplexed, but attending a direct marketing conference in the US provided the answer. The internet and e-commerce were driving growth. Upon returning to Japan, I pivoted my business towards an online model. In the midst of the internet bubble, I attracted interest from venture capitalists. However, when the bubble burst, they abandoned us, believing there was no future in B2C e-commerce. Undeterred, I persevered and launched Tenka.com in May 2000, one of Japan's first online drugstore. Eventually, renowned management consultant Kenichi Omae invested in us as an angel investor with other venture capitals following suit. This bought us precious time. We struggled, but also pioneered search engine optimization and long tail strategies, concepts that were not yet widely spread. In 2004, Kenko.com went public on the Tokyo Stock Exchange Mothers, a testament to our resilience and innovation in the face of adversity. 
Regulatably, the IPO incited aggressive opposition from entrenched interest groups targeting the company. Picture this. Japan has a national association in virtually if every activity you can think of. These powerful groups fund political campaigns and security votes, essentially binding politicians to them. They even offer casi jobs to returning bureaucrats in exchange for policy influence. And that's just, uh, that's just the tip of the iceberg. In our industry, brick and mortar competitors had a tight grip on the system. Back in 2006, the revised pharmaceutical affairs law was passed but failed to address online over-the-counter dr over drug sales. However, when detailed regulations were drafted, our competitors cunningly manipulated the system. For online sales, they twisted the law by requiring face-to-face -face warnings for every drug, falsely claiming online sales were unsafe. But let me tell you why that's absurd. If you buy aspirin from a chain drugstore, your only interaction is with part my cashier. Online will provide comprehensive information on every product. And we can easily contact customers in case of a recall. By any measure, online is not only as safe as conventional, uh, con conventional drugstores, it's much safer. A competitor tried to drive us out of business, but I was determined to fight. In May 2009, we sued the ministry, alleging unlawful violation of the constitutional rights. After years of costly battles, we finally won at the Supreme Court in 2013. The court ruled the ordinances excessive and illegal, rejecting the face-to-face -face requirement. The story revealed the corrupt relations between bureaucrats and the companies they regulate. But by throwing stones and standing up for what's right, we can inspire change and build a brighter future. In 2014, Kenko achieved a remarkable milestone with annual sales reaching 20 billion yen. The e-commerce industry was witnessing a colossal battle between giants like Amazon and Rakuten, rather than a diverse eco ecosystem of smaller, agile competitors. Eventually, Rakuten acquired majority share in Kenko.com. As an entrepreneur at heart, I chose to leave Kenko.com after two decades of leadership. During my tenure, Japan's startup landscape evolved dramatically, and entrepreneurs were no longer viewed as corporate dropouts. But the country still faced challenges, and I felt com compelled to continue throwing stones to shake things up. One of my regrets with Kenko.com was its domestic focus, while global startups thrived. Determined to create a company with worldwide impact, I founded Kototsuna in 2016 after a sabbatical at the Lee Kuan School in Singapore. Kototsuna, a travel tech company utilizing AI and machine translation, aimed to break down language barriers worldwide. We developed a multilingual digital concierge for hotels, improving communication between guests and staff. Through Kototsuna, faces uh, significant challenges uh, during the pandemic. We persevered much like Kenko.com did after the internet bubble. Today, Kototsuna boasts a diverse team of 28 members from eight countries, with half being non-Japanese. During the pandemic, we create new services that have the potential to make the world a better place. Stay tuned as we unveil I unveil these groundbreaking innovations soon. I don't expect my effort alone to revitalize a stagnating Japan. However, I believe in the power of throwing stones to inspire others to take action. As someone who experienced Japan's golden era, 
I consider it my duty to keep challenging the status quo for the excitement it brings and the future of the next generation. Together, let's keep throwing stones at a stagnating Japan, igniting innovation and fueling the dreams of the generations to come. Thank you. <laughs>